Welcome to the Referrals Podcast, the show designed to help everyone from the solopreneur to the Fortune 500 company win the referral game. If you want to build a company with an army of ambassadors and raving fans who speak highly of you and refer you willingly, you are in the right place. Let's meet your hosts, Chris Angel and Michael Mayer. Welcome back, everybody. It's another episode of the Referrals Podcast. I'm your co-host, Chris Angel, here with your host, Michael Mayer, and our special guest from last time, Carla. Carla Pierscala. Carla, welcome back. Carla Thank P. You. Thank <laughs> you for P. having me back. Yes. Uh, yes. Well, listen, you dropped some awesome knowledge bombs last time, and uh, we wanted to explore those further and see what else uh, we could pull out of you. Michael said you could do 17 episodes from your, all your wisdom, so... I think she needs her own podcast. Everybody's <laughs> clamoring. Everybody's does. It's, it's like, we want more Carla. We want more Carla. And it's like, yes. all right, we, we listen to our listeners, right? <laughs> I we like wanna, it. We want more Carla too, right? And, and here's what Absolutely. we'll do. We'll all dress the same, right? So it's like, we'll all dress. Make sure you wear the exact same outfit and we'll do another one. How's that sound? Nailed it. That would be right? incredible. Awesome. That would be amazing. I love it. Um, so here's the thing, Carla, you have, um, <laughs> I love how you got into your business, into a new city, to a new industry, and you went from 40 to 200 in 12 months in terms of clients, like crazy, 5X, you 5X'd it big time. So let's kind of dive in. I mean, let's just get going here. Where does it start? I mean, when, I've heard affirmations are important. Is, was that a part of your plan at all? Absolutely. Um, well, it wasn't part of my plan. It just kind of snuck up on me, if I can be honest. Um, yeah, please. You know, I, I heard affirmations, affirmations, affirmations over and over again, and I kind of poo-pooed it. And, mm. uh, you know, what? I'm a very positive person. I have good confidence. I, you know, I don't need this at all. And so I wasn't super intentional about it. And I finally opened my mind and started to do them on a daily basis. And it was incredible the results I saw from it because I thought I already had it down. But when you're very intentional about doing your affirmations every day, every morning before every meeting, the results, I'm a big believer in the law of attraction now because what you put out in the world, it does come back to you. And not only with the affirmations, but taking time to also see what has happened in your life, what you're grateful for and what you appreciate in your life. Those were kind of a lifesaver for me as well. Yeah. Um, not just for business, but also in my personal life mm -hmm. as well. It, you know, has turned a lot of relationships around by just having that time to appreciate and be grateful for what you do have. Do you write those down? Do you say them out loud? How do you do them? Yes and yes. Mm -hmm. So um, my affirmations, I'm very verbal about those. And I say them in my car, in the shower, as I'm getting ready, you name it. I walk around and talk to myself like a crazy person. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the appreciations and what I'm grateful for, those I do write down. Uh, there's a different switch in my mind when I'm talking about what I'm grateful for that I do want to write those down. And I keep a log of them and I go back and I look through them. And if I'm having a tough time about something, I make sure that my gratefuls ref are, you know, pinpointed to what my challenge is. Mm -hmm. So sometimes let's be honest, when your significant other is driving you crazy, you can focus on those small things that drive you crazy about them. Well, I have a whole book. It's a big book <laughs> that have all of my things that I'm grateful for the relationship I'm in. Mm -hmm. And I think that has made a, a huge difference for me personally. And I'll do that with my work as well. When I have a challenging employee or um, a project that's very challenging, that's what I focus on. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe that, I mean, first of all, on the affirmations, I mean, for those of you that are maybe new to Carla and didn't see the last episode, check out the last episode. It was, it was phenomenal how, how she developed this and, and, and uh, dropped down in basically a new city for her and grew a very robust business very, very quickly. And now she's back on talking about how she 5 x her business, went from 40 clients to essentially over 200. Yep. And she's talking about affirmations and appreciations. And, and affirmations are so powerful because it, it, it lets you talk to yourself in the future about who you want to become, right? It's not necessarily about lying or, or saying something you're not. It's something you're going to be. And it's very future focused. The power of the appreciations is it's very past focused, right? It's, it's like, these are things I appreciate. But 
But the beauty of appreciations is not only are they past focused, I appreciate this, but they also are future relevant because what you appreciate appreciates. So whatever you appreciate will be more or increase in the future. It will appreciate in value. So if you like your kids laugh and you appreciate your kids, if you want more of your kids laughter, appreciate your kids laughter now. If you want more great relationships, appreciate the great relationships you have now. If you want more referrals, appreciate the referrals you're currently getting, right? So, so both of those are such a powerful, uh, you know, I am committed to whatever it is for your affirmation or something better, which is something that I've been, been training on for quite a while, uh, which really opens up your mind to, I am an international best-selling author or something better. I am committed to being a best-selling author or something better, right? And it's, the, or something better that sometimes just goes, um, and being open to the opportunity. Michael, what? what you just said about the committed, the the statements that I'm committed to, that yeah. was kind of a game changer for me in the affirmations because I had a hard time getting on the bus of saying, oh, I'm, you know, the number one title rep in the world when I know right. that I'm not or yeah. I'm in the best shape of my life. Well, I'm not yet. However, right. I'm committed to that. I'm That's committed right. to getting there. And that helped change my mindset around the affirmations. And most of the time I do say I am because yeah. I am going to be and, but the committed helped me get over that hurdle. So for those that haven't tried the committed to statement, that's very helpful. Yeah. I got that from Hal, right? Hal Elrod uh, with the miracle, the miracle morning guy. Right. And a uh, good friend of mine. And uh, I, I, lo I love the slight adjustment that mentally I am committed to does versus I am, I am always had a 99% pull for me to get there but there was always that 1% like, no, I'm not, right? Whereas with the I am committed to, I felt like I was hurtling full force 100% towards whatever that was for me to be in the future, right? So there is a bit. And then the or something better uh, is something I learned from Jack Canfield about mm. probably nine or 10 years ago. And that has been the biggest thing for me is, is, you know, I am an international, uh, international best-selling author or something better. I am committed to being an international best-selling author or something better. Well, the or something better, it's amazing what happens, you know, or two, right? Have two international bestsellers or speaker, trainer, back end of it. So it, it's, a, it's allowed for us to, to really think about um, or something better, right? There's something, there, there's more opportunity out there than maybe what we even thought. I'm in the best shape of my life or something better. Well, it's like, well, how can, you know, well, or something better might, might be a six pack for Chris Angel, right? So, you know, it, it, whatever it may be. So you just never know. So right? good. So good. So let's, let's keep, I want to keep going, Carla, because I know yeah. you've got a lot of different um, things you've used to do that 5X. So the, the next thing we wrote down was the networking stack. Walk us yeah. through what the networking stack is and how did that work for you? Well, the networking stack to me is, for me, it was a lot of different systems coming together. So I talked in the last podcast about how I struggled with my time and time blocking, and I just didn't have enough time in the day. Well, as I started to be very intentional with my time and time blocking, I realized, hey, I have time for meetings, right? And I wanted to make sure that I wasn't just shotgunning it and going all over Minneapolis, which is a very large metro. And I wanted to be very intentional about where I was and who I was meeting with. And so after my time blocking and figuring out when I can have meetings, I would stack the meetings mm -hmm. and I would stay in one place. Like in the book, it talks about having your home court advantage. I would have one restaurant I would go to and I would put one meeting after another, after another, after another. And I would do up to four meetings in a row. Wow. And I never perfected the, the triangle of trust in, in, um, introducing everyone, but I did it to a better level than I was. And it was huge. So I would have one meeting with a loan officer and right after them, and I would let them know, Hey, I have another meeting. We're meeting at 12 o'clock. I have another meeting right at one. Is that going to give us enough time? And it gave, 
I got their permission that I could cut us off at one o'clock and good. let them know someone else is coming in. And at one o'clock, when that agent came in, I could do a quick introduction. Hey, meet my lender, lender, meet my agent. And I would sit down with the agent and I had it set up saying, hey, we're done right at two o'clock, if that's okay. And then in would come my next one. And it was just a way for me to be very efficient. I'm a high D on the, the disc. And so I want to be very efficient with my time. And that allowed me to just plow through meeting after meeting and get what I needed from it instead of having all the drive time. And so you mentioned it, disc. How, how are you using disc in the, in the networking stack or how did that help you with, you know, DISC, you know, D's are straight to the point. I's are social and outgoing. S's are steady and dependable. C's are cautious and perfectly accurate, right? So did you, you know, are you incorporating that into your networking stack? Did you, did you, uh, could you just judge by how they're coming in? Did it have any effect on those? Or, and, and maybe not even just your networking stack. Are you, how are you using DISC? Oh, I use it in every day, every day, everyone I meet, I use it. And it's become just natural. In the beginning, I couldn't point out to you who's a D and I and S or a C. I would have to ask that question that you just asked, Michael, and have them tell me. Mm -hmm. And after I did more research and kind of learned more about personality traits, I could start to naturally pick up on it. And I would ask them, oh, so you're a high I or you're a high D and allow them to correct me if I wasn't categorizing them correctly. And even though you put them in that category, they're all different. Right. Even if, you know, I'm a high D, but I'm not like a lot of high D's. I'm, everyone is different. Um, but I would definitely use that because I thought going into these meetings, well, everyone loves me, right? And <laughs> I can communicate well with anyone. Well, that's not always the case. And unless you know their personality style and what makes them tick and drive, you can't fully connect with them and go deeper like we talk about unless you can connect with them. You know, I'm, I love the platinum rule. I live by it. It's not the golden rule of treat others the way you want to be treated, but the platinum rule of treat others how they want to be treated. And that changed everything for me. And um, I love it. Two things right off the bat. We're, we're talking about how to 5X your referrals, right? And, and you've done it, right? And, and, and one of the things is, is fly, right? Which is first love yourself. The affirmations and appreciations are a way for you to develop a love of yourself. And it's, it's tough to love on others or be loved by others until, until we really love ourselves. But this isn't, you know, uh, people who fly first love yourself uh, are not selfish, right? They're actually selfless. They're, they, they don't not think about themselves. They just think about themselves less, right? And what you just said is one of the most unselfish things that anybody could ever say is, is I knew that this meeting wasn't about me and them loving me. It was much more about me finding out exactly what behavioral style they were and having a conversation that aligned with that disc, right? Mm -hmm. So very unselfish, very high emotional intelligence uh, type of, uh, type of, of uh, approach there with the platinum rule versus versus the golden rule because so many people are great if they're a d talking to a d so many people are great if they're an i talking to an i s talking to an s c c talking to but but where the emotional intelligence goes up is when a d can speak with an s and and actually have a real good slowed down type of uh, a, approach around safety and security and and uh what they love to do with their family right? And not say, okay, what's the bottom line? Yeah. So just don't tell me the story. Don't even give me a sentence. Like, give me the word that what you're talking about will just encompass, <laughs> right? So let's get ready for referrals. In the red corner, we have the average agent working by advertising, learning on the fly, no systems, no profit, and no clients. And in the blue corner, we have what could be you, the profitable agent working by referral, loving life and loving their clients. Are you ready? 
Take your business to the next level and go to www.callwithcoach.com and set up your free referral coaching session. Go now, change your business forever. www.callwithcoach.com. And I think it's huge because we have clients because we want to um, fill what their need is, right? We want to give them the solution to whatever their need is. Well, a lot of times we focus on our product. And we think that's the solution. That's their need. And Chris, we were talking about this earlier. It's not necessarily the product that is always their need. It's that connection and knowing how to just slow your rate of speed um, or just your tone of voice or how you ask questions, how you get to the point. That is a game changer. And that will actually make them feel that they're getting what they need, even though the product's the same. If you're not speaking their language, yep. you're not giving them what they need. Walk me through that part on the asking questions part, because I know you have a process for that. Like, what is, like, how do you do that? What do you call that? Is there like um, a peeling onions or peeling? <laughs> peeling back oh, the onion, uh, right? Ogres or onions, right, right. Digging deeper with your questions. Um, yeah. That is the one thing in the last two years, I would say I've been hyper-focused on, hmm. is the power of questions. That has been one of the most powerful things. And I wish I would have learned the power of questions many years ago. Mm-hmm. You can get so much from that. And people, by asking the right questions, people will feel as if they're engaging in a great conversation and not just mm-hmm. getting you know, peppered with questions if you yeah. ask them correctly. And they'll feel like they're being heard mm-hmm. and listened to and that their problems are being solved. And that's what's big. It's the open-ended questions are the most important ones. When they say something, not just jumping back in with your story. Oh yeah, I did that too. Or I have this, you know, it's not a competition. We don't have to keep score. It's all about asking, why is that important to you? Tell me more about it. Don't think that you can understand what they're saying until you ask a few questions. Mm -hmm. Because that initial answer, you're only getting surface level. You have to ask a few more questions in order to truly understand what they're saying. So for me, it's, what does that look like for you? Is mm-hmm. one of the big questions I ask them. Yeah. Um, just tell me more. How long do you peel the onion for? Like, when do I stop peeling the onion on that particular answer of theirs? You know, there's no right answer to that. Mm-hmm. It's, you can, most people will be intuitive enough to know when they've hit that core of mm-hmm. the onion and they can stop asking yeah, questions. Good. Mm-hmm. You know, when once you start getting details and start getting a specific answer from them, mm-hmm. you know that now you're getting into the layers. Yeah, the them. same answer over again, right? Yeah. You get right. to the core. You get to the core of the onion, right? And another another way to judge, I mean, peeling the onion, right, is when you get to the tears, right? I mean, you know, that's what peeling the onions is peeling about the layers until you get to the tears. Mm-hmm. And and in many cases, uh, that's probably a good place to stop is mm-hmm. when they start crying in front of you. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't have many people cry. Yeah, that's good. You stop yeah. before you get to that point. Which but is- I like the heart of it. I like the heart of that being like you know the tears represent you know the emotional side emotions, of emotions. That's right. Yeah, when you get people to the emotional side of their answer, yeah. then that's you mission accomplished. That's the goal. That's right. And I. I'll even ask permission because sometimes depending on the relationship, if it's not someone I know very well, I don't want to go too far, you know? And so I will ask, do you want to tell me more about that? Yeah. And they will, if, if they want to, if they're starting to get uncomfortable, they'll say, no, I'm good. And we can move on. Yeah. That's good. I like it. it. I want to, um, you met last episode. So that was episode 15. Um, one of the things that really caught my attention was that you did this book club and you had 150 people across three book clubs. Um, was that at, was that at one time? It was, but it was over three locations. Right. So we couldn't, we couldn't put everyone in one location. So yeah, I have to know more about like, how did you do that? How does it work? How to, how can I do that? Yeah. 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 We have a bunch of people who want to know more about book clubs. Right. And, and, and what's the advantage of doing a book club and, and the whole nine yards? So let's let's dive deep into, into book club, right? What you did with your book club. 
Okay. Well, first, one of the, I talked last time how the book club started, but why I continued on with the book club was it was wonderful for me to get in front of a group of people. It allowed me to save some time, love up on my clients in a mass setting instead of individual one-on-one -on -one, as I was starting to not have enough time in my day to reach over 200 clients. That takes a long time to reach them individually. So it was a way for me to give value to my clients, contribute to their success, and reach a mass amount of people. And so the big thing with the book club is, we talked about it last time, is being prepared. You know, have having everything prepared, knowing that you know the system, you know what you're talking about. And, um, you know, I just did a lot of research and as I was training other individuals, that gave me a lot of knowledge in order to bring that to the book clubs. And it wasn't, uh, the book clubs weren't something that it was a class where only I spoke. It was very collaborative and it just had a flow to it. They took the conversation wherever they wanted to take the conversation and we yeah. would brainstorm and mastermind around what the hot topic was that week. And really what, what got everybody into the book club, that many people was twofold. One, I had been doing it for a while. So, you know, people were just starting to talk about it. And through that, they were getting value. That was the big piece. They were implementing systems, they were finding success, and they were attributing the success to the book club. So people were talking about it. So they wanted to show up. And secondly, I may have cheated a little bit to get people there. I brought Michael in and I said, mm -hmm. you know, here, listen to Michael, listen to his system and what it, what it all is. And from that, we started a book club immediately afterwards. And everyone was so excited to jump in and learn and wow. put it into action. And so that, that is was a great idea. It's so hard. I think there's um, book clubs are a popular idea. And then I think sometimes people try to enact one or create one. And then there's just kind of some fizzle around like, people showing up. Somehow, I think bringing Michael was a great ingredient in that. Um, I think it sounds like you had done some groundwork ahead of time to just it, through your first book club to get people interested. I mean, that's incredible to have momentum going into that. Yes. Yeah. Talk and, and invite, and book, talk and invite. Yeah. And the book club, uh, and, and that's our download for today, right? Is, is basically the guide to having a 7L book club. Right. And uh, yeah. this is based on conversations with Carla, based on conversations with a lot of people. Uh, and essentially it's questions and, and actions people can take yeah. after each chapter. Right. And, yeah. and including the introduction, yeah. the dedication, uh, the acknowledgments, the endorsements, even we even talk about those. You know, uh, one of the questions in the early part is, is if you wrote a book, who would you want to endorse it? And, and who would endorse it and that kind of thing. And that gets you thinking already about, you know, the, your partners in life already. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's one of those where, you know, they can download the, the book club, have a 7L book club literally in, in 30 days. Um, it won't probably have 155 people though. Yeah. Uh, so what Carly did is, is super, super special. And uh, she really built up the momentum beforehand and um, led the group. I love that what you said, Carla, is, is uh, the person who's leading the book club uh, doesn't necessarily have to be the all-knowing, right? Mm -hmm. It's not a class. It's not a course. It's it's mm -hmm. a collaborative club. That's why you call it a club, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and the beauty too is like Carlos saying is you become you become more knowledgeable by leading the book club because you are forced to. You're accountable to yourself. And you're also accountable to all these people who, who are going to be in the room, right? Mm -hmm. How did, how did that evolve for you? What did you notice, you know, from your first book club to the second book club, as far as your growth? Oh, I don't even know how to put it into words. Um, the fact that I'm still doing it, you know, over two years later speaks for itself. There is so much value in um, not only just taking the time to read and grow, and grow yourself as a person, but you know, sharing that with others, it it just it feeds my soul is really what it does is when I can bring that. That's where my passion comes out and where my passion shines is when I can feed others as well. You know, feed and my you're soul. teaching this all over, right? You're you're now a certified referral trainer, your CRT yeah. master series. And uh, so so your te what's your what's your favorite subject to teach? Oh, I have to pick one. <laughs> yeah, you got to pick one. 
so here's the deal, right? There's a, there, this is Min, Minneapolis, St. Paul is, you know, there's somebody in, in Appleton, Wisconsin, they're a team leader and they want to bring you in to teach, right? So what are you, what are you going to teach? What do you, what, what would you start? And let's say this, this Appleton, Wisconsin office kind of knows 7L, but not really. What, what would you, what would you choose to teach and, and bring to them? Well, my first go-to that I love to teach, and it's because I feel like it's the foundation piece, is time blocking. Yeah. I hear over and over and over again how people are just, I don't have enough time, I'm too busy, and, and I'm a little bit of a control freak, if you know yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. And I just want to shake people and say, you have the control of your time, yeah. of your day, of your success. And I just yeah. want to shake them and say, here's how. It's, it's easy. Yeah. You know, it's not easy to do, but it can be a simple system. And so time blocking would probably be the first because it's that foundational piece. If you don't have that, the rest will be a bigger challenge than it needs to be. I love that you said that. It's, uh, it's, uh, it is so found, you know, it shouldn't be time blocking. It should really be life blocking, right? Because it's it, it, time equals life. And it, it's one of those where Gary Keller had me on stage at a, at a mega camp. And he said, Michael, you're one of the most ritualized and habit guys that I know of, right? You have all these systems, you have systems of systems of systems. You're a systems guy, right? And it's like, but, but here's the deal. I'm taking away all of your habits, all of your rituals, all these, these ways of in order of way you do things, except for one. What is the one habit or the one system or the one ritual that you would like, if you had it, you could build all the rest. And it's my answer. I thought about it. I had to think about it. That's a lot of set, like morning ritual, nightly ritual, Sunday night ritual. Like I was just thinking of all these different rituals and habits. I, and I can, it was time blocking mm -hmm. because I can get all of, all the rest back with time blocking. The most important system that I have in my life is time blocking. Mm -hmm. The concept of, I mean, this is time blocked from one to 3 PM on Fridays. It is podcasting time, right? Even though I flew in really late last night, right? I mean, it's like I knew that today between 1 to 3 p.m., it was podcasting time. How do we stay ahead with the podcast? We have it time blocked forever, right? So, so it's one of those, and, and why is it Friday afternoon? Why isn't it Thursday? Why isn't it Monday? Well, Monday's coaching, Thursday's speaking, right? I mean, it's like we have days for those things, and, and it's not just better for me. And Carly, you've probably discovered that with time blocking, it's just, it's not just great for me, but it's also great for everyone in my world. Absolutely. Right? right? Because you can plan around it. They can plan around it. They, they know you're not available Thursday nights or whatever, right? Because you have things that you're doing uh, during that time, right? Mm -hmm. So, so it's one of those where um, time blocking is such a valuable tool and, um, Honestly, Chris, we should probably put down to have a, a larger segment just on time blocking mm -hmm. uh, at yeah. a future podcast. So absolutely. Well, I was going to say, I think one of the things uh, people often when they when they go <laughs> Google Googling or Amazoning for books about how do I grow my business, they don't automatically think about time blocking. They're like, yeah. how do I run a Facebook ad? How do I get more yeah. referrals? And yeah. I, what I love about this conversation, Carly, you're saying is like. Like time blocking is what I would teach. If I had to come into a new place and teach right. something. I teach you want to five X your referrals. The time answer blocking. is time blocking. Yeah, it is. Because what she did is she five X her time. Yeah. She yeah, five X yeah. her time, yeah. which led to five Xing right. her referrals. And that's it. Her focus was referrals. Whatever you focus on, it will five X yeah, yeah. Uh, if you time block it. So yes. she got five times more done uh, mm -hmm. because she was time blocking. And, and I yeah. truly believe that you can five X to 10 X simply by just organizing your time, right? So Absolutely. Good. Love so it. Good. I love it. Well, this was good stuff, gang. Uh, book clubs. I, I love the stuff on book clubs. I think that's a very tangible thing that people can start implementing today. In yes. fact, that is the download for this episode. You guys can get the book club guide, yeah. right? Which is like, it's the guide. It's like the thing that shows you how to do the book club, the questions to ask, right. the things, like it's the whole thing. Yep. So, Go to referralspodcast.com. You guys can download for free the, the book club guide and start your own book club in your uh, local, if you're local, or you can even do it virtually if you're a virtual business, but, right. but go get the guide at uh, referralspodcast.com. Awesome. Carla, thanks for being on today. Again, 
Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. Amazing knowledge bombs once again. <laughs> Michael, sir, thank you for your time. Good to see you again. Thank you. We'll always catch you awesome. Off. Always catch awesome. You. Can't wait for the next episode. They're going to love it. Yeah. Crazy. 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 Awesome. Off the charts. Yes. So. All right. Thanks, Yang. We'll catch you next time. See ya. Bye.